Here we are, here we are. And um, 50 years old. Yeah, 50 years old. How do I look? If you're on the YouTube, how do I look? Someone said I don't look 50. That's uh, quite a compliment, but I know it's not true. You know, my daughter's nine years old now, and when she was a baby, maybe not a baby, maybe one and a half or two years old, she was a toddler. I was sitting with her at the pizza takeaway place, I think it's Roman's Pizza in Highlands North. Um, I've, I've now moved to Debonair, Debonair's Pizza, but that's another story. I prefer Debonair's. I like their delivery, and I prefer their pizzas. Roman's, Roman's was a bit too much... Too much admin. I found Debonair is more user friendly. They got a nice app. Anyway, this is before I was really into apps. You know, I'm a slow adapter. You know, I know about apps, but I don't get into them straight away. Um, I mean, I'm using the Uber Eats a lot. I think the the pandemic uh, got not just me. I think a lot of people got us more familiar with all these things. I mean, Uber Uber Eats in the past was for eh. It's like a luxury, you know. It's like, yeah, it's it's not it's not a have to have. But then, pandemic time, Uber Eats. I think I use Uber Eats on average once a week. Yeah, not bad. Um, so I used them last night. Very nice. I'll, but I'll talk about last night in a second. So I'm sitting at at Romans with my eighteen month old daughter on my sitting on my lap. I don't know. Maybe she was too. Somebody in our people, same rule. If you see a woman who's pregnant, she might not be pregnant. She might just be overweight. So don't say, when are you due? Congratulations, muzzle tough on, on your baby. No, I'm just fat, you know. That can happen. Same thing if you see a man or a woman with a young child. Don't jump to the conclusion that that's the grandfather or the grandmother. This guy said to me, oh, is that your granddaughter? Is that your granddaughter? Okay, so I, I, felt, I felt a bit horrible. I didn't feel so good about myself. So if you tell me now that I don't look 50, but you see, it's the way people grow up. It's the, uh, maybe not cultural, it's just their life experience. So you will meet somebody, you'll come across a family, where like there's like four, five generations, all still alive and every because they'll have their children at twenty. So twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. That's four generations minimum. Four generations minimum. If you haven't okay, you could become three because of COVID. Because maybe your elderly person didn't make it. But so before so pre COVID, maybe four generations. Now we COVID, so maybe three generations. But you could get up to five generations. And that's how people are. Well, some people. So, um, I, it's become more common in some, with some people to have children later. So I was 41 when my daughter was born. No, not true. I was 40, turned 41 that year. I was about that. My mother... My mother was 41 when she had me. My mother turns, and she's 90, she turns 91 in October. So anyway, this guy thought it was my, uh, my granddaughter. That wasn't, that wasn't very nice. So, let's, uh, whew, got people, a lot, a lot of birthday wishes, um, have a wonderful day, and all of that, and don't know, this was my saddest, I felt sad on my birthday. 50, 50 is quite a milestone, and it's not, it's, it's, uh, I'd rather turn 30, I'd rather turn 40. 50, you get, 50, you, you 50, you beyond half your life. What, am I going to live for another 50 years? Am I going to live to 100? Me, mm, very unlikely. As my friends left, uh, they said to me, like, uh, oh, Damon, yes, to another 50 years. Um, thanks for the evening, yada, yada, yada. I said to them, listen, guys, I can maybe promise you another 20 years. 20 years I can maybe promise you, but uh, 
Beyond that, take that as a as a as a big bonus. A big bonus. Yeah. I mean that's the that's that's the reality. You know, I that's why I was so uh, you know, let's not I'm not gonna go too much into my experiences. I mean I had the, the second vaccine for this COVID-19 on, on Sunday, but I'm, I'm not going to carry on about it. I'm not going to carry on how, uh, what, how uh, I feel like a, do I feel like Superman? Do I feel invincible? Not, no. That's not, that's not, no. Do I feel special? Yes. I mean, the, the stats say, if you look at Africa, the continent of Africa, I don't know how accurate this is, but even if it's a little bit inaccurate, it, the figures are still very bad. Only 2% or 3% of Africa has been vaccinated against COVID. People, half the people that have access to the vaccine, they don't want to have the vaccine because they're stupid or mad or ignorant or all of that. And then People in lots of African countries and other developing countries, which is a euphemism for third world countries, they just are not getting enough vaccines. So, we learn this pandemic is becoming an endemic. What's the difference between a pandemic and an endemic? A pandemic is, first of all, a pandemic is an epidemic. That's spread over the whole world and lasts a while. An endemic is now this everlasting pandemic. So the flu, for example, is endemic. It's in the world. It's always there. People have flu injections every year. Well, a lot of people. What's happening now, I think COVID is going to become like the flu is or was, where we're going to have to continually have boosters once a year, maybe even twice a year. That's just that's the reality, and, and it's because it's thanks to people. We haven't been able to get this herd immunity. We haven't been able to to weaken the spread of this uh, this uh, this virus. Classic example: I took Mika, my miniature Schnauzer, to the vet this morning. Eventually, so it's been going on for more than a year. I'm a bit embarrassed. Every now and again, we'd touch Mika on her, like if we touched her, her right hand paw, right hand leg or paw, do you call it a paw or a leg? Right hand leg, paw, she would like cry, so she's in pain. And she, and then she was limping at one time, took her to the vet, she just put her on painkillers, not even anti-inflammatory, just painkillers. Anyway, it's carrying on. Eventually, we just, I took her to the vet for x-ray. She's going to be x-rayed today. But that, anyway, she, hopefully she'll be okay. But I'm standing outside the vet, and there's some other people waiting, and people are talking. And these are, these are obviously, you know, people that go overseas. They got a, they get, People travel. So this one woman was saying how, talking about the, the, the plane going to France, and the last time they flew to France, they pack people in. They pack people in, and uh, four hundred people in economy class. And and then she says, I know this, and this is the thing. She says this without. This is a woman, probably in her early seventies, maybe yeah, probably. She just mentions matter of factly, and you know, my husband, you know, my husband hasn't hasn't been vaccinated. You know, he just says you couldn't be bothered to, to be vaccinated. And the people she's talking to, you know, I'm just standing on the side. I can't get involved. I'm not one of these people that just starts talking to strangers. I don't do that. You know, just private space. Private space. But the two people she's talking to, they don't look shocked or horrified. They didn't roll their eyes. The one guy, who he had like some accent, French or whatever. He just said, well, you know, in France, in France, you know, it is strict. Look, I can't do a French accent. I can do Yiddish and Indian or Asian, sort of. That's it. That's my limit. A little bit of Russian. Sometimes Israeli, but no, not so good. He just says, oh, in France, things are they very strict in France. You can't go into a restaurant. You can't do it. But he said it as if, well, you know, France is very strict. Like, 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 ooh, it's difficult. 
Not like saying, oh, this has to be done. So, the message, the message, eh? the message is not, isn't getting out there. But, yeah, you got your, you got your disinformation peddlers. I saw a story now where companies and businesses are, are like, they rewarding their clients for getting their vaccine. So there's one business, was it KFC? One of the one of the well-known uh, takeaway businesses. Oh no, no. Oh, I understand. I remember the story now. One corporation. They offered all their staff a free KFC meal. They offered them KFC lunches if everybody got vaccinated. So for the lunch, they all got vaccinated. But they weren't. They didn't vaccinate themselves to say they weren't vaccinating themselves to save their lives. They're vaccinating themselves for a KFC meal. You remember a good couple of months ago, um, Mayor of New York, Bill De Blasio, he appeared at a press conference and he was doing the same thing, and he started munching on a hamburger in the press conference and eating the fries. Ooh, that was so horrible, horrible. You don't want to see a man chewing on it. And he's talking while he's chewing on the burger. Ooh, so delicious, he was saying. Like trying to encourage people to get the vaccine. It's pretty, pretty. Anyway, that's where we are at the moment. Got, mustn't carry on too much. Mustn't carry on too much. Um, you may have heard there's a new variant. Uh, I don't know, maybe... Do we need to know whenever there's a new variant? Anyway, this particular variant is that it's pretty, pretty strong. Pretty strong. Um, it's got uh, it's got a very, very strong ability to, to, to evade. In other words, to break through your immune system. So it can be pretty lethal. But here is the thing. It hasn't really taken off. It's, they say, they are predicting, that it's not really going to take off. So, it's not as in, well, this is, the, this is the story so far. So, it's not as infectious, and it's not going to spread as much as the Delta variant. But, if you do get it, pretty, pretty bad. They don't, they're not comparing it yet to the Delta, whether it's stronger or worse than the Delta variant. But there you go. And uh, that's what viruses do. They spread, they spread, they spread. And, um, okay, so this is something that uh, I was thinking about. I saw a little story. Uh, so we got all these Afghan Afghan refugees uh, people that have left Afghanistan, people that are still going, going to leave Afghanistan, hopefully, if they want to. And I thought to myself, will South Africa take in refugees? Well, uh, South Africa was approached by I can't remember, one of the bodies, organizations, looking after and these uh, Afghan refugees. South Africa has said, sorry, no. We uh, we just can't take in any Afghan refugees. Not not even not not even one. And I thought to myself, not even one. Not even one. What about a, an Afghan nuclear scientist? Top highly qualified specialist neurosurgeon. Eh? We don't bend the rules. South Africa says we we got too much. We got too many refugees already, already. So we're not taking any any. We're not taking in any Afghans. The the people, not the dog. And I'm think. I then on the other hand, I thought about it. At at first, I was a bit disappointed. You know, South Africa, we like an open, accommodating, friendly country. Well, our constitution is. But, uh, <laughs> sure, now, 
If you're on the YouTube, you noticed I, I sneezed into the elbow. Sneezing into the elbow saves lives. I actually saw a poster about that. Anyway, excuse me about the sneezing. Um, on second thoughts, you know, we've we got such xenophobia in South Africa. Maybe it's for the better. You know, particularly, I mean, a lot of our Pakistani, particularly Pakistani immigrants, Somalian immigrants, maybe they're illegal, maybe they're legal. They've been, there's been terrible, we've got a horrible history going back to 2008. So maybe, you know, there are some situations in South Africa where people are so cruel and vicious and, and, and criminally, um, what's the word, criminally capable or whatever. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're better off with the Taliban. Maybe the Taliban, maybe you're safer with the Taliban than coming here. Because, you know, people, you know, immigrants have been murdered in South Africa. So maybe that's for the best. Another, another classic example of our xenophobia, and this is, this is horrible, this is embarrassing. People should be ashamed of themselves. There was uh, things going around yesterday, claims and allegations, reports, that ANC MP um, Kame Harvard has allegedly been sharing classified information about South Africa with the Chinese Communist Party. So this lady, she, she was born in China. She came to South Africa as a young child, I think. And she's an ANC MP. So now they're painting her with this brush of being a spy. And uh, I'm glad this, our state security agency has, has rubbished these claims. They said there's no, there's no uh, evidence to substantiate such a thing. I mean, they say that she, she leaked an intelligence report. She, they say that she leaked a, a, a an intelligence report. Um, oh, no, sorry, I'm getting confused. No. Let me correct myself. There was, there's a, a leaked intelligence report implying that Kameh Harvard was spying for China. So... The state state security agency, the, the allegation is that the state security agency uh, raised concerns about about this this woman possibly sharing classified classified information with China. But here is the thing that gives it away that, it, that for me tells me that it's it's probably it can't be possible because it, it's uh, it's just. Leaked intelligence report. I mean, just the word intelligence. There's no intelligence going on at the moment. I'm sorry to say, with regard regarding our government, in just in lots of aspects. I'm sorry to say. I know that sounds negative, but uh, look, it is worrying. It is worrying, and it's it's you know it's sad to see that the DA, the Democratic Alliance, they they've called for President Cyril Ramaphosa. To make this leaked intelligence report public, um, and I, you know the D, the DA is is then um, kind of like supporting and positively reinforcing this kind of this kind of xenophobia. I think before the DA makes public statements like this, calling for this report to be made public, the DA should rather. Investigate and, and, and think about it first and just pause. You know, too often jumping in, trying to get, get political clout, political advantage, think of it, think about it first. That, that's that's, the, that's uh, the way I see it. And then, yeah, Dr. Well, Dr. Kame Harvard, kind of like, she doesn't give herself much credibility when she says something like this. I never engage in, uh, I never engage any spy allegations. She says, only God is with me, behind me. God will punish all these mafias and their stories and put the evil to hell. I've had enough. I have taken, I have to take legal action against the evil, she added. See, now she's sounding like Mokweng Mokweng. 
where there's like invisible gods and stuff. Just like, that's, I think you lose a bit of credit. I'm sorry. I think you lose a bit of uh, credibility. When you start bringing God into it, don't bring God into it. Don't bring God into it. Don't bring God into it. So yesterday was my birthday. I was sad. I, was, I wasn't so happy feeling old. Then I see this story that doesn't that makes you feel even worse. So Lily's Leaf Farm. Lily's Leaf Farm is the place where the top leadership of the ANC were in Ravonia. They were caught and they were all sent. That's where they all most of them were sentenced to Robert Island and uh, etc. And it's and it's and it's become a museum. Lily's Leaf Farm is closing is they're closing it forever. The museum uh, cited financial difficulties and the struggle to raise enough money to keep it going as the main reason for its closure. And they, and they said that uh, the COVID-19 lockdowns uh, was a, 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 a major factor. Um, it's... I think I think it's it, uh, it was it's a it was declared a, a national heritage site. Um, it's it's just isn't this tragic? I found it tragic. It's supposed to be like something really special. I haven't okay. I haven't visited it myself, so maybe I'm a hypocrite. Wonder if it's maybe. I wonder is it when is it? Maybe it hasn't closed yet. Maybe we can quickly go before it closes. I don't want to exaggerate. I don't want to go crazy. But is it like, I mean, what? imagine in, in, in France they announce uh, we're taking down the Arfield Tower. Yeah, we kind of, you know, taking it down. Okay, that's an exaggeration. I admit that. What next? What next? Because we know there's been a lot of drama and problems at Robin Island at the Robin Island Museum. Is that going to be the next victim to to all this mis, this financial mismanagement? Because we know there's there's issues there. People haven't been paid. It's been a whole big drama. So Lily Leslie Farm. Can't visit what she was. It's like um we've been robbed of our culture, we've been robbed of our history. Um, and Lily's Leaf Farm, there shouldn't be financial difficulties because it's it's part of our history. So schools should be teaching children. There should be now that you know children. There should be school outings. There should be a school visiting Lily's Leaf Farm every day for a tour. There's enough schools just in Johannesburg. The Leasley Farm should be visited every day. Obviously, that has not been the case. I remember when I was at school, they took us to Gold Reef. They took us to Gold Reef City. Gold Reef City, just to the south of Johannesburg. To look, we went down into the mines. What did we learn? I mean, that wasn't very exciting. Put on a helmet down in the mines. Try to pick up the bar of gold. Then you can keep the gold, they told us. Well, the masters. Apartheid Museum. Apartheid Museum is also right there. I heard a story that's also not doing so great. I can't stand corrected. What next? What next? Tell you? Sure. Come on. Um, things are... Things are, are things are, I, I don't want to say things are falling apart. But please they, tell me they're not falling apart. I hope not. Okay, I'm going to have to come up with happier stuff tomorrow. I'm going to have to.